Fire Postal here. So today we are taking out our trusty Horton 229. I actually haven't flown this very much recently. Um, I mean, I've just got so many different things that are being requested, and then with the XP 54. Uh, but I thought Mission 12, um, you know, earning. I forget even how much, 150,000, I think 150,000 uh, personal points was a good time to try to um, take this plane out again and fly it a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, my most viewed video is actually a uh, Horton 229 video. Um, so I suspect most of you know what this plane is, uh, but if you don't, it was a, initially it was a reward plane, then came out as a every once in a while premium plane. So you can certainly maybe have the opportunity to buy it in the future. Um, what is it? Well, it's a tier 8 German premium fighter. Um, pretty darn quick. Has two 30mm cannons on here. Um, really long range 30mm cannons. And yeah, a kind of unique um, setup to the guns firing. So if you hold down the trigger, you'll fire like your three or maybe four shots pretty quickly. Boof, boof, boof. Um, but then you're overheated and you're overheated for a while. So typically when I'm firing this, I'll do a couple shots like I'm doing now. And once I kind of get them on target or I feel confident that I'm on target, I'll hold down the trigger. Or I'll hold down the trigger if um, if if the plane is going to be out of my my turning radius soon. I'm just going to hold down the trigger and, and hope RNG uh, blesses me a little bit. Well, let's watch out here. So I don't know what's behind me. This plane doesn't have very good maneuverability at all. Um, yeah, it's just okay. Let's flip back around here. So I'm going to use my airspeed to get up and away from planes like this one right here. How are you doing? You're not doing so good. Um, yeah. So big chunks. Things like a TU-2, I feel a little bit more confident with, um, you know, holding on the trigger. It's a big freaking target. Um, you know, things like the GAU-288s, uh, those planes tend to be just easier to know that I'm going to do okay. Um, oh, I've got a human JU-288C. That's the tier 8 German bomber. He is up way too high. He can't possibly be effective up here. I'm assuming he's up this high because he thinks he's able to stay away from me being that high up. Um, but clearly he's not correct. I'm speculating though. Who knows? Maybe he just flies that high. Um, all right, so let's we're gonna dive down here. I guess let's go ahead and go get this sector over here. Get a couple of shots in on the bombers. Yeah, what are we defending this sector? Why are we defending this sector? I would go attack that um, airbase, but whatever. What do I know? past self knew what I was doing. I don't know what past self was doing, but looks like we're just trying to get rid of the ground attackers here in the center. Watch out for that radar tower. And I guess we're just holding on to the center here. All right, let's hold on to the center then. Um, we're doing pretty well uh, points-wise. We've got three sectors to their one. I've already got a grade three. Uh, we're doing pretty well right out of the bat here. Um, the thing with the Horton is it can go cold. You know, if your if your shots are not landing, and when any plane that has only two 30 millimeter cannons uh, can attest to, when your cannons stop hitting, it becomes a very frustrating plane to play. That goes for this, the Swift, the Key 162s, the J8M. Um, what else? I feel like there's something else. Oh, the uh, Lavochkin 160. Um, yeah. So. Alright, we're finally headed over to this sector that we probably should have been headed to a million years ago. 
But I suppose it's probably best that we didn't, because we would have been on air supremacy, which this video would be a much different video. All right, so we've got a bomber headed that way. Let's get rid of the heavy fighter behind him first, if we can. Magically, the Horton could hear... The Hornet, excuse me, could hear the cannon fire. Decided it wasn't a good idea to be there anymore. Doesn't really matter, though. Alrighty. Guns on target. So, yeah, definitely not going to get that um, airbase. There's no point. We want this game to last longer, please. And thank you. They're going to cap this um, command center pretty quickly here. Probably as soon as these TU-2s bombs land, unless I kill him first. I wish I killed him first. But they've got... You know, they've clearly got a whole bombing run uh, inbound. Let's see if we can get rid of this guy. Nice! Love when the cannons hit. Alright, got the Akamatsu. Um, got the airfield, but they flipped the garrison just in time to save us from getting uh, stuck with air supremacy. So let's see if we can get a couple bomber kills here. These cannons... I remember when the video came out, the promotional video came out for the Horton, like this is supposed to be like a bomber killer. I mean, it kind of sort of is. You can see I'm tearing up bombers pretty quickly. Relatively quickly, we'll say. Um, but the fact of the matter is you're still in just a fighter. And so you can't take the hits that a heavy fighter would take. I'd much rather be in a 262 or something like that if I'm just strictly going for bombers. Um, but in general... The Horton's a really, really good plane. In fact, it's very good at killing 262s. It's very good at killing heavy fighters. It's really the, the types of plane you should be going for would be heavy fighters. Uh, because you've got the speed to stick with them. Stick with them. <laughs> um, and your poor maneuverability is still better than heavy fighters. So, pretty darn good thing. Man, oh man. These guns are really working with me in this battle. Um, but, like any plane, this plane's just better the more you play it. And what I mean by that is, you get used to the range on the cannons, you get used to the firing, you know, reload time and things of that nature. Um, you get used to what your airframe can handle. And so, I think this was the second battle I played. Yeah, I know this was the second battle that I played in the Horton, because the first one was like a 12,000 or 13,000 personal point match. Uh, it was still a pretty good match. But it allowed me to, like, remember the nuances of this plane. Cameron. Cameron. Nope. Don't keep turning. Let's not be that idiot. We're going to boost away. Use our speed. Uh, once we get about 4,000 feet away or so, we'll probably turn around. Nope. He's already dead anyway. All right. So we're going to keep on keeping on here. What more can we do? Uh, there's not a lot of time left. We're almost... We're definitely winning this at this point. The uh, three sectors that we've got are fully capped. It's not like we're going to lose them. So at this point, let's just see what we can do. I hate that the map is showing incorrect um, planes. See if we can get another kill, maybe. Come on, baby. There you go. He's on fire. Come on. You don't want to live anymore. There it is. Oh, awesome. Got ourselves a hero of the sky. Love getting a grade one. Just makes me feel like I did what I was supposed to do. Win or lose, if I can get a grade one, um, you know, I know I had a huge impact on the battle. Come on, can we get another kill? Nice. Oh, pull out the ace. Loving it. Sweet. Oh, look at all the badges. 18,000 personal points. Uh, not my best in the Horton. Uh, but pretty darn good. Let's, um, well, so after this I will have, um, commentary from right after the battle. Let's hear it. All right, so we were able to get an ace out of that bad boy, 11,000, a little bit more, uh, damage to aerial targets, which is pretty darn good. Um, must have been all those bombers I was shooting at, I'm sure. I did, um, so obviously this is right after the battle. I didn't do the voiceover during the battle probably mention it but just in case I didn't I actually was specifically not going to um, go for enemy bomber at a certain point 
Um, his impact was, was just not scary enough for me to worry about it. Um, and I did not want to get air supremacy. I wanted to kind of draw out as much um, personal points as I could. I felt very confident that in this plane, with my skill set, we were going to be able to um, have a pretty darn good game. Um, yeah, so got the ace, got the, the 11,000 plus um, damage, got 18,000 personal points, um, captured two sectors even. Um, yeah. So, I mean, no complaints from this. Got basically everything you kind of go out there for. Even got a McCampbell's, which is always nice when you're in something that... Uh, um, yeah, McCampbell's I don't typically focus on. Uh, McCampbell, you need to kill at least 10 aircraft. And at, um, one of each type of aircraft as well. Um, yeah, so that that was always nice to, to trip over and get um, at this point. Rap was, I've played against Rap before, he's much higher than he normally is, or at least than I remember him being in. I don't know if he was just trying to avoid me at all costs um, kind of situation, which I can't blame him when, when I'm in Horton, but I don't think he was as effective in the battle because he was so high up. And to be honest, if I wanted to, I could have killed him again. So um, I don't know if that was just something he was testing out or if um, what. So, c'est la vie. Johnny, I didn't really run into until the very end there, and, and you know these guns being the way they are, things like a Spitfire, um, a Key 94, like those things are really turny and maneuverable, and they're pain in the ass to hit. Even with a plane like this that has you know all the accuracy buffs that I can get, um, those turny fighters can be a real pain in the butt. And I've even been like in my Spitfire 14 or my uh, Yak 15 and you know turn the tables on a horton that tries to tries to go after you just because you can you can dodge their bullets get around behind them and stick with them long enough to knock out an engine and then it's all over right so yeah good times still working on our swiss goose um 18 000 is always very helpful Ooh, we look like we're gonna get offensive on the allies as well and um yeah we'll see how this goes We'll continue it.